Hello everyone, my name is Jordan, also known as Scraps. Today I want to show you a old mouse synth. The reason why I call it this is because it kind of replicates or imitates a very distorted organ. I'll show you by playing a demo example here in a few minutes, but I just want to show you guys that this is a lot of heavy peak removalness because uh, there's a lot of distortedness when working with this synth. We do use a spider audio, although I don't think it really matters now. I think I was trying to use something with another instrument, but it didn't quite work. So we won't be using that part of this synth. So take a listen to the demo example, and I'll show you how to make this synth. Okay, so one of the things I like to do is I like to set my BPM at 140. Next, what I want to do is create a combinator. Inside this combinator, I want to create a blank instance of Subtractor, or an initialized patch. What I first want to do is go over to my mod wheel. I'm going to turn up my phase all the way. I'm going to take my FM back to negative 12 and that will do it for our mod wheel. Next we want to go over to our first oscillator and set the phase difference at 44. Next what we want to do is we want to change our mode from a negative algorithm to a positive algorithm. We want this to be waveform 9 and we'll leave the octave where it is. We don't mess with frequency modulation. So for the second oscillator I'm going to turn it on. I'm going to take the phase difference to 89 and I'm going to take this down an octave. I'm going to put it to a positive algorithm I want to turn on ring modulator. Next, what I want to do is I want to take my LFO, I want to push up the rate all the way, and set it to a square, and leave it like that. What we're going to do later is that we're going to modify the rotary one to modulate the amount to give it a little bit more distortedness. So, after this, I want to take my low pass 12 and push it all the way up to 127. Take the keyboard follow knob to 32. Next, we want to turn up our decay and sustain all the way. And that should do it for our patch for subtractor. Next, I want to create an RV7000 advanced reverb. I want to take my dry wet to 23 and my decay to 21 to give it some more width. Next, what I want to do is I want to create a line 6 bass amp just to give it a little bit more squash. Set it to 73. After this, this is where a little bit more complexity gets into it. We're going to use a pulverizer. Now, one of the things we're going to do with pulverizer is set the squash to 20 and the dirt to 20 as well. Next, we want to take our release and set that to 26%. Next, we want to send our filter to a combinator. We want to take our frequency all the way back, or a comb filter, I'm sorry. And we want our peak to be at 46%. And we want to choose our filter to squash, then dirt. Next, I'm going to take the tremor to frequency to 78%. I want to turn up the rate to 1.38. I want to set it on spread. And I want to choose the rising down waveform. Should be called decay. Next, I'm going to take my lag all the way down. For the tremor to volume, I want to take this down negative 20%. I'm going to turn the follow frequency all the way to 
48%. Actually, let's make that 64. Hold shift if you can't get the right numbers. Uh, uh, I really can't get 64. Well, 65 will have to do for now. Next, I'm going to set my threshold to 24%. I'm going to set my attack to 13%. And then finally, I'm going to set my release to 66%. Next, what we want to do is we want to create a unison. We're going to take the dry wet to about 28 and then detune to 48. And as you can tell, there's still a lot of high frequencies we want to remove. So what I'm going to do is assign three PQ2s. And I'm going to quickly just boost the gain and the Q of all of the A and B filters. Uh, I'm sorry, A and B uh, equalizers. And what I'm going to do next, and I'm probably going to lower the volume for this, is that I'm going to sweep through all the frequencies. I'm going to bypass some of these for now until I get to them and just play a few notes and remove them. The notes that are most annoying are the ones I'm going to remove. Next what I'm going to do is create an M-class equalizer. The reason why I'm doing this with a giant uh, studio effects equalizer is because it seeks out higher quality signals. So I'll turn on my P1 and P2. I'm going to set my low shelf, make sure to turn it on, all the way back uh, for the frequency. I'm going to take it down to negative 2 and set my cue all the way to 2. Next, I'm going to take my filter frequency. I'm going to pretty much push it up all the way and boost it by 4 decibels and take the cue and bring it up to 15, 15.3. I'm actually going to take this to about 13.25 and boost it a little bit more. Next, I'm going to take my high shelf, leave it in the middle, but I'm going to take the gain all the way back to about 12 and set the Q all the way up. Or actually, I'm going to set the negative volume to negative 4.3. Next, I'm going to take my parameter 2 and I'm going to set the filter frequency all the way up to 8.5, bring the gain all the way down, the Q all the way up. That doesn't look quite right, so I'm going to play a few notes and figure out what the peak is really uh, telling me, which frequency it is. Seems like we were on track. So the next thing we need to do is just compress it a little bit. So I'm going to turn on my line 6 bass amp. I'm going to set the threshold to 95 and the volume to 80. Next, I'm going to create an M-Class Maximizer. Take off limiter, put release to auto, turn on soft clip, and set the amount to 100. And there you guys have it. You have your very own old mouse. If you want to do the amount for the LFO, it's pretty simple. Just go to your subtractor, choose rotary 1, go down to your LFO, and choose LFO 1 amount. And there you guys have it, your very own old mouse.
and I'll check you guys out later for a, another video. Peace.